Welcome to Polka Dotsy's Body Love Podcast. The podcast where we talk about all things health, fitness, and body positivity with your host, Chloe Pedley. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am chatting with Jody Arnott today and I'm super excited about this because Jody is another one of my heroes and I am getting to talk to some awesome people. Jody is the director of multi-award winning Healthy Balance Fitness and is the co-founder of The Moderation Movement. She's almost ready to celebrate 20 years in the fitness industry. During that time, Jody has enjoyed many roles, including old school aerobics instruction, which by the way, we're going to talk about in a minute, gym management, <laughs> personal training, group training, running, coaching, coaching and lecturing in Cert 3 and 4 in fitness. She is now focusing on how our body image affects our relationship with movement and presents to fitness professionals, parents, students and the general public on how they can have a more peaceful relationship with physical activity and their own bodies. She works with the Butterfly Foundation and is in her final year of her Master's in Counseling at Monash University. Jodie, you are a powerhouse woman. Like That is an impressive resume and I am so excited to have you on the show today. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Chloe. So excited to be here. Yay! Okay, so tell me a little about Healthy Balance Fitness and how it started and why are you different to all of the other fitness companies that are out there and sure so healthy balance fitness was well it was sort of born out of the fact that I loved group fitness and I loved taking groups in the park and yeah just adored it adored it as it was something different to personal training and gave gave me a different energy so um, myself and somebody else, um, Amanda Hall, at the time, we put the we decided to put it together and said, like, let's expand and create some different locations for this. And it kind of just was born out of that. So um, Amanda ended up leaving the fitness industry for a while and then coming back later. So Healthy Balance landed in my lap and it was um, since about 2003 and it's been in the format that it's in now. So we've had different locations. We run group fitness, we run boxing, we run running programs. And I have a team of trainers who are absolutely awesome and go out and instruct those classes in, it's very grassroots. It's like um, parks, community venues, like halls, scout halls, um, church halls, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, you know, very basic, but it's all about community. It's about enjoying um, exercise and yeah, just connecting and, and um, yeah, loving it rather than making it a chore. So, And you've got a really interesting and what I think is a fantastic approach towards getting people to move their bodies. So tell me a little bit about that and how did you get into the body positive fitness movement? Tell me about that. Sure. So when I first started in fitness, I think the reason that even drew me to be a personal trainer in the first place was I loved helping people feel good about themselves. So whenever, you know, anyone felt good about what they were doing, I just wanted to high five them. And, you know, like I'm the sort of person who cries at the Olympics, you know, when everyone's doing their absolute best. And, you know, so I, I loved all of that. And I wanted to help people to feel amazing about themselves, whether it's, you know, achieving their first push up or, no matter what it was, I just want, want it, could see this scope for um, helping people feel good about themselves. But the longer I was in the fitness industry, the more I realised that a lot of the messaging and a lot of the a lot of the things that even I contributed to um, were making people feel worse about themselves and not better about themselves. And there's this real disconnect, I think, with people feeling really bad about their bodies and trying to solve that through exercise. And... Um, the longer I was in there, the more, I mean, the more it just didn't sit well with me. And I, I realised that I was going to need to change the way I approached it. I was going to need to learn a lot more about body image. And um, I just saw that the, the industry was becoming more and more about aesthetics rather than about true health outcomes. So... Yeah, I just, you know, did lots of research, you know. Um, I was really inspired. I saw um, Tyron Brumfit present uh, back at the Women's Health and Fitness Summit many years ago, and that was around the time that I was thinking, oh, we really need to look more at body image. We really need to um, think more about this and change the way we do things. And I saw her speak, and I thought, yeah, look, I, I want to speak about this as well. I want to learn more, and I want to really change the way that I do things. So since then, it's really been... Um, 
you know, no going back for me. There's, you know, it's all about how we feel and how we function and it's really about taking the aesthetic side out of it um, and, you know, we'll talk more about, you know, how we can really heal our relationship with physical activity and our own bodies. Yeah. I think that is absolutely incredible. And I mean, obviously the work that I do with Polka Dotsy is very much in alignment with that philosophy and getting people to move for the sake of being healthy and feeling amazing and really nailing those goals. Like there's, there's nothing quite like it as a trainer. And I think that what you're doing is absolutely phenomenal. So I guess we have this shift in our industry and I was talking to Michelle from Mish from the women's health and fitness summit the other day and she's seeing it too. So there's, there's people like yourself who are really pushing a healthier and more grounded approach to movement and to our bodies and to how we look at food and how we look at movement. If you could change the world, Jody, what would that look like? Ah, wow. Where would I even start? <laughs> You've given me this big magic wand, I'm going to wave it everywhere. But I think um, the first thing that comes to mind is I would love that every uh, that everyone just have this idea that body diversity exists and that is a really good thing. Yes. Uh, and if I think that if we all truly embrace that, we just there'd be so many less problems. There'd be, you know, there'd be less body image issues. There'd be less issues about people trying to constantly change their body to fit the stereotype. We just realise that we're exactly okay as we are in every point in time. So I think um, that would be the first thing that I'll change with that big magic wand. Yeah. I, I think that's really beautiful actually. And you've, you've sort of touched on this, um, changing people's relationship with movement. Tell me about that because wow. <laughs> this is really exciting for me. Like this, this is awesome. So, <laughs> yeah, look, I guess, I guess the, the best way to look at it is to maybe give you some six tips, um, give people um, and we'll go through those. But some main tips, um, so part of what I do with moderation movement is that we talk about intuitive movement and intuitive movement is different to, you know, workouts or exercise in that it's much more looking inside for your body, for your own needs and signals, rather than trying to stick to external rules and ideas about what exercise should be. So some of the ways that we can look at being more intuitive and healing that relationship with exercise is these six tips. So the first thing is to really think of it as movement rather than exercise um, or a workout because a lot of times people will say to me, oh, well, only certain types of, um, like only running counts, walking doesn't count. Or they'll say, yeah, or they'll <laughs> say, um, you know, it only counts if it's 30 minutes. Like if I only do 15 minutes, it really doesn't count. Or I have to do it until I'm sweating and I'm out of breath or it doesn't count. Now this idea of it not counting, I think, well, count towards what? And a lot of times people will go, oh, I'm not really sure. But then when we, when we pare it down, they sort of say, well, count towards burning calories or count towards ah. changing my body or count, count towards, and it usually comes back to sort of a diet type thing. Mm. So what I like people to, first of all, the first tip is to really think of it as movement rather than exercise or a workout because all movement counts towards our health. All movement. Absolutely. Absolutely. All movement. So that way, then we start to increase the range of options for ourselves. We start to increase what, you know, what we might enjoy to do. And so, you know, gardening, of course, gardening counts. Of course, just walking down the street to the post office box and back counts. Of course, it all counts towards our health. So I think once we um, look at our language a bit, we start to then um, broaden our options. So that would be the first tip. I think also we need to really um, stop treating movement like a diet. So, yeah, so <laughs> what happens is people, um, you know, they, they think about calorie burning. And so that really changes. It changes the type of activity people choose. So like I said before, people say, well, if I'm going to spend 30 minutes, I better run rather than walk because that'll burn more calories. So they're choosing, they're changing what um, activity they're choosing. They might not even like running. So a punishment. Yeah, they're really forcing themselves into trying to do, um, you know, that because it's calorie burning. 
The other thing that it really changes when we just focus on calories is it changes the duration that we do. It really pushes us to go harder, longer, faster. And that's because we want to burn more calories. And what that does is it takes us away from really thinking about our own bodies. You know, our knee might be hurting. You know, uh, we might be feeling really fatigued. We might be sick that day. But the calories, the calories, we've got to burn more. We've got to burn more. So it takes us away from listening to our own bodies and making it all about that number, that count. And I've seen that so many times, you know, people going onto the treadmill at the gym and just going like crazy until a certain number comes up and then they know they can get off the treadmill. But, you know, that really takes us away from, well, how does my body feel? And am I even enjoying running on the treadmill? And, yeah, so that is a really important part of, of not only healing our relationship with exercise but also reducing our risk of injury and fatigue sure. and all these awful things that come with with that bad relationship with exercise and getting more from life i mean as far as i'm concerned mm-hmm. movement is meant to give you more not take yeah. it away so yes yes and when we turn movement into a diet what does it do it just takes away from our life rather than um, brings anything towards it so and then the other thing is we have to stop thinking of exercise as penance for food yes so, yeah. <laughs> i mean We don't need to earn our food because we are alive and breathing. We need food. So, you know, we, I I just really want people to take that away and realize that they don't need to earn a piece of chocolate cake. They can just have a piece of chocolate cake. For sure. So, yeah. So, um, once we take the calorie side of things out of, um, and the food compensation side of things out of movement, we can be much more, um, open to explore, different intensities, different durations, different activities. And just really think about well, what do I feel like? What makes me feel good rather than making it a diet? Absolutely. If you want to roller skate, roller skate. If you want to dance, dance. If you want to jump yeah. up and down on the spot, whatever yeah. ticks your boxes, right? Exactly. <laughs> Yesterday I did lounge room dancing. I mean, you know, and, and, and if someone was saying, you know, does that count? Well, then probably they wouldn't think lounge room dancing counted. But did it make me feel awesome? Did it really energise me? Yes. Did it make my dog stare at me like I was a weirdo? Yes. But that's, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what life is about. And yeah. you know, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. So. <laughs> Exactly. So I think that can really help. Um, you know, we, we know, and most people, when you talk to them about dieting, they say, yeah, diets don't work. Well, okay, let's stop making exercise a diet as well. So. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then look, I think um, tip number three would be to really practice listening to our body and responding. Mm. We've been so used to taking external advice, external rules, external, this is what I should do. You know, we, we, we get these messages all the time and we really lose touch with what do I like, but what also makes me feel good? What can I do right now at this point in time? Which is, yep, we're still. If we can really tune in to our bodies, and this is part of being mindful as well, it's really tune in to, well, how do I feel today? Do I have lots of energy? Do I feel really stiff? Do I have any injuries? Am I feeling unwell? Do I have lots of time? Am I feeling stressed? You know, we we need to take all these things into account and then try and respond in a way that, okay, well, is movement appropriate or is rest appropriate? Absolutely. If movement is appropriate, what kind of movement? What do I want to do? What's going to suit me today? And I think if we can really try and listen and respond in in the best way we can, we're going to be so much better off and it's going to be so much more sustainable and so much more something that we're going to actually want to do than if we're trying to stick to those rules all the time. Absolutely. I, I, I think that's a really fine distinction there as well because coming back to the point of what type of movement, maybe we're not going for a run today, maybe we're going to stretch, mm-hmm. maybe we're going to walk in the pool, maybe we're just going to spend five minutes looking after our body, rolling it on the foam roller, whatever it is that helps us. Exactly. Uh, I, I, I think that's such a healthier approach than punishing ourselves, going to the gym constantly for the sake of whatever it is that we're trying to achieve. So yeah. sticking yeah. to some idea that this many sessions per week is correct. And this many, you know, this type of intensity is correct. And what, you know, what's best for us is really listening and responding. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm a hundred percent on board with that. I think that is such a powerful shift in mindset. So yeah, yeah. And it look, it really makes a difference. I know myself when I used to, I mean, you know, I called healthy balance fitness 
you know, balance was in the title for a reason. I was always on board with balance. So mm-hmm. in the past, you know, I always used to say, yes, yes, balance is really important. But I used to think that balance could be prescribed from the outside. I used to think, we, well, I, I can write you a balanced program and it would have <laughs> recovery and it would have lots of rest in there. And to the, to the eye, like when you look at it, yeah, it was balanced. But true balance can't be dictated from the outside. We have to really listen to ourselves because what's balanced for one person is not balanced for someone else. And when I really got that and started incorporating that into my own exercise, it made a world of difference, you know, in in how often I had to go to the physio, in how my back (laughs) was. My back was so much better. I didn't have as many injuries. I was just, you know, so much better off when I wasn't doing this external idea of balance, which was still, you know, what someone would consider a balanced program, but it wasn't listening to my own body. Absolutely. Healthy balance fitness saves you money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So it's about knowing that balance can't be dictated from the outside. So Absolutely. let's listen more. But yeah, so tip number four would be to set goals that have absolutely nothing to do with appearance change or weight. Ooh. And that, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That can be really controversial. And I know when I've spoken with um, fitness professionals before, they all go, oh, my goodness, what is she saying? How do we but, market that? How do we yeah, market that? Exactly. We can't sell that program. <laughs> but if they really looked around, they'd see plenty of people like yourself who have really successful businesses and who are body positive and they're, you know, they're weight inclusive rather than, you know, trying to equate health and weight, you know. Um, plenty of successful businesses out there. Absolutely. Uh, so, and look, it's not just, you know, a nice thing. It's not just something that I'm saying for, because it's lovely. The evidence really backs it up. So the evidence shows that people who exercise for intrinsic reasons, so, you know, developing a skill, um, improving competence, enjoyment, feeling good, they mm-hmm. have a much higher adherence um, to those who do physical activity for extrinsic reasons, so weight loss or appearance modification. And the, the evidence also shows that people who um, are focused on appearance change um, when they exercise, they are much more, um, they suffer social physique anxiety much more. So, and they, you know, so they're more likely to quit and they're more likely to feel bad about their bodies. But the whole reason why they're exercising is to feel better about their bodies. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's a catch-22 situation. And look, I can send you through the evidence if, if you want to add that to the podcast notes or anything. Do you know what? I would absolutely love to because at Polkadotsy, we're all about, like, we back up what we say. It's all yeah. about science. So yeah. if, we, if we can go, like, science, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to beat that out. <laughs> <laughs> but I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it's not just nice and fluffy and lovely. It's actually evidence-based that um, setting goals that have nothing to do with our weight or appearance are going to help us sustain our physical activity over our lifetimes. We're going to um, be able to enjoy it more. So It makes perfect sense. Like even from a, a fluffy, as you say, perspective, yeah. if you're moving because you love doing something, you're going to keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> because you love it. It makes you feel good. It uplifts you. Yeah. There's other reasons as opposed to what size jeans you're wearing. Yes. And whether or not you can fit into a certain pair of whatever. So yeah. I don't know. I it, 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 it seems so logical and sensible to me to just find something you love doing and do more of that. Yes. Yes, totally. Yeah. Exactly. You've got it. <laughs> <laughs> and for the personal trainers out there, this is so easy to teach. It's so easy to help your clients achieve. It's it's not something that you have to be afraid of. Like as as much as it might seem more simple to market a, a summer shred program, wouldn't it be better if you had your clients for life doing something that they absolutely love doing and helping them feel amazing about themselves? Yeah, and that they're actually going to sustain because we know that summer shred program that, that oh. <laughs> makes, even if people do um, actually, you know, lose weight, they're, you know, the evidence shows us that they're likely to put it on and more um, and it's just a matter of when. So, mm. yeah, and look, we know that there are... There are benefits, immediate benefits to one exercise session, which is mood. So we can boost our mood in one session of um, physical activity. 
but we can't change our body in one session of physical activity. So yeah. what happens is people can become really demotivated. If all their focus is on how they're going to change their body, they do one or two sessions of, of movement and they think, oh, this, there's no point. My body hasn't changed. I don't want to do this. It's really demotivating. Whereas if they were focusing on how they felt, then after one session they're going, awesome, they just want to do more. I know, release those endorphins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, even as a fitness professional, there's so much you can do with that, like really focusing on those immediate benefits for clients rather than, you know, and just steering away from the, from the weight and appearance changes. And you, you can do that. You just you can role model that so easily in class by what you talk about and what, what benefits and, and improvements that you point out and, and commend people for instead Absolutely. of making it about weight or appearance. You just make it about all these other amazing things that the clients have achieved. I know. I know. Hey, look at you. There is no way that you would have been able to run that hill last week. High fives. That's awesome. What an achievement. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Or check it out. Like that weight is phenomenal. Well done. You look how far you've come. Yeah. Or how are you feeling chasing around after your kids? Have you got more energy? Yeah. Is, is that cool? Like, are you getting better sleep? There are so many, like an infinite spectrum of reasons to move. Yeah. Yeah. And, and those reasons will happen quite quickly. Like those benefits will happen quite quickly. And um, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I think there's, you know, if we keep making exercise about chiseling our bodies and appearance change, we're really, I don't know, we're underselling it. We're really just, we're, it's the wrong focus. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other thing, and we've touched on this a few times, so point number five is to choose activities you enjoy. Yes. Like, it's a no-brainer, <laughs> right? We, nobody wants to be forced to do punishment, you know, to do things that they hate. But there are so many people out there doing that because they think that that's what they should do to burn the calories or that's what they should do because that's, you know, the, the quickest way to get fit or, you know, that's the latest thing. But really just, you know, choosing what we enjoy is going to bring so much to our lives. What do you enjoy doing? Like what's, what's your favourite oh, way to move? Do you know what? My favourite way to move is walking. And back when I first started as a trainer, I used to be embarrassed to say that because back then, you know, everyone, I, I used to sort of think, oh, no, but, you know, it doesn't count and you know, it sh I should be more hardcore because I'm a trainer. And, and I know there's a lot of other fitness professionals who hear that and something, it'll strike a chord with them. They'll go, oh, yeah, I thought I was meant to be super hardcore as well because I'm a personal trainer. But it's like, I love walking and I've, I've got a dog and we walk everywhere together and that's my absolute favourite thing to do, it's just walking. And then I also enjoy running as well and I run with my dog and I enjoy dancing, especially <laughs> lounge room dancing, <laughs> dancing. And I've done all different kinds of dancing. I've done belly dancing and salsa and I've done hula hoop and I've done, you know, oh. all different kinds of body kind of movement stuff and um, all very fun. So, but yeah, most, mostly what I do is walking and I love it. And that's incredibly awesome. Like yeah. uh, I pet bugbear of mine is the burnout that personal trainers face from thinking that they have to be hardcore and it yeah. breaks them. It, yeah. it literally breaks them. Yeah, totally. So uh, we are on average, we last 18 months in this industry. Yes. And I anecdotally would say that it's a lot of it has to do with burnout yes. and injuries and just not being able to sustain the hardcore mentality of what's your excuse yes <laughs> really it's living up to this stereotype basically you look at a fitspo meme and yeah. that's what a, a fitness trainer feels like that they have to live up to yeah and it's just ridiculous pressure and i don't when i look around all the best trainers are not those people mm people that we employ at Healthy Balance Fitness, they're the people who just love moving and love helping other people to love moving. And Which they, is so empowering. I, yeah. I, I just think that's awesome. So awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I don't hire them because they look like a Fitzbo meme or they act like a Fitzbo meme. I hire them because they care about people. Mm. They know their stuff and they're just passionate about encouraging people to, to feel and, and do their best. Which, what more can you ask? Like, seriously, there aren't very many of us who are ever going to be bodybuilders, fitness models, or Olympic athletes. No. But the rest of us have to drag this body, the only one that we get, all the way to the end. 
Yes. <laughs> it has to last us. So. No. And do we want to drag it or do we want to skip and hula hoop and walk and garden and, and swim away? <laughs> Going on cycling tours when we're in our 90s and still be able to keep up with the people in their 20s. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, all, it's, it's an aspirational goal. It's not unachievable. So... Yeah, it's just about doing what what we enjoy, but also doing what our bodies can do and what we enjoy, what we, you know, what what's appropriate for us at that any point in time. Yeah, it's just we need to think about it in a new way. For sure. Yeah, and so the last point that I come to is that I think we really need to reflect on this often, that our fitness and our physical activity program doesn't define our worth. Oh my goodness. Now I'm not showing the video, but I totally just fist pump there. <laughs> I might publish this very privately. <laughs> yeah. So we are all valuable, amazing, original human beings, whether we're active or not, whether yes. we are, and you know, and healthy, we've got this idea of being healthy is good. I mean, first of all, it's very complex. What is healthy? But whether we are in good health or not, we are really valuable as human beings. We are enough exactly as we are right now. So we don't have to do a certain exercise program to prove that. We don't have to do a certain, we don't have to run a marathon to prove that. No. We don't have to do a certain number of burpees or push-ups to prove that. No. 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 And even for people who choose or cannot, um, do any physical activity, they are worthy exactly as they are right now. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I think as fitness professionals, we need to really remind ourselves of that. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think it's something that we all need to take intrinsically, but it's also something that we need to remind our clients of. It's something that we need to remind everyone that we meet because... Yeah. Yeah, great. It's awesome if you can do burpees, but that has nothing to do with you as a person. Yeah, yeah. At all. Yeah, and when people get a bit confused and it gets self-worth gets tied up in our physical achievements, our, you know, fitness achievements, that's when I see things go off the rail. That's when we start seeing exercise dependence. That's when we start seeing people overtraining because no matter what, they've got to make that marathon. It's like, yeah. Maybe your body's telling you you're not ready for the marathon this time or maybe your body's telling you that a marathon is not for you and that's all okay. But if you hang your self-worth on that, that's where things can get really tough for people. And that's, I think that there's, there's this whole, I mean, fitness does alter our mood. We, we do see the positive effects of it. But if we're using it as a crutch to define our self-worth or to be our only mental health strategy when we get injured, which does happen yes. when we, when fitness goes away, if we can't train, we need other ways of defining our worth. We need other ways of feeling good about ourselves. And if that's all we've got, then we're pretty screwed. So yes. Yes. yeah. You're exactly right. And, you know, quite a few years back, I had a back injury that um, stopped me from being able to do any real movement for about two years. So even walking, you know, I'd do a 3K walk, you know, down around the block and I'd be in absolute agony and have to lie on the floor for ages mm. after. So it really, you know, here I was, a running coach and a personal trainer who couldn't actually do much movement at all. And I, you know, I love movement, couldn't do it, had to take some time off. And it took me a long time to really just listen to my body and enable myself to do that because I kept trying to get back into it, get back into it because I loved it, but also because I felt like, well, how can a running coach be a running coach if I can't even run? So I had this idea of my worth as a human being was tied around being a running coach, being a fitness professional and doing really well at that and being a runner. And it was only, I had to really look at all of that and say, you know, Jody is not just a runner. You know, part of what I do is fitness training. Part of what I do is running, but I am not a runner. I'm Jody. Yes. So, yeah, and it, that that you know took a lot of a lot of um, really looking within myself and and thinking about that. And it's only now that it's like, okay, well, if I couldn't run for a while, I'd still be perfectly okay with who I am as a person. Yeah. I think there'd be a lot of people tuning in at the moment who that's really resonating with because we are almost conditioned to define ourselves through our achievements and define yes. ourselves through what we do yeah. as opposed to who we are. Yeah. And especially when we're chasing PBs and when we're chasing that extra distance and we go from three Ks to five Ks to 10 Ks to a half to a marathon, 
if we don't knock out that half or that 10K or even that marathon, we're no less valuable. No, exactly. And I guess um, I'd ask the people who really feel shattered when, when that doesn't happen, you know, they're really struggling to cope if they don't hit that PB, then I'd be saying, oh, you know, I think maybe you need to look at whether you've defined your own worth via this achievement. Because, yes, we will get disappointed. Yes, it's awesome to have goals. But disappointment and completely shattered is really different. Mm. Um, it's important to, to look at that and start thinking, okay, well, who am I aside from all these external things? You know, who am I? And it's not an easy thing. It's not like, you know, you ask the question and there's the answer. Yes. It's about <laughs> pondering, lots of pondering. Um, but I think it's a really important thing to reflect on. Otherwise, we do go down that path of overtraining and, and um, you know, chasing the next thing because I've seen so many people, they, they hinged everything on that PB, whether it's a triathlon or, a, you know, a marathon or something, and then they achieve it and then, well, what's the next thing? Because they've got to still be proving their worth. Bigger, faster, stronger. Yep. They yeah. are, yeah. And, I mean, as I say, it's fantastic to progress. It's fantastic to have goals. Yes. But it does not define you. So yes. I, yes. I, I, I <laughs> again, like, I'm not showing the video, but I haven't been able to wipe the grin off my face for most of the podcast because, <laughs> like, everything you're saying is just like, yep, yep, yep. So, yeah. Yeah. oh, man. Um, so, I guess, you know, you're based here in Melbourne. Healthy Balance Fitness is a Mel- Melbourneian um company but you do so much work with the moderation movement and online like your face is everywhere how can people get in contact with you how can they get more of jody how can they get more of jody's philosophies like tell us how we can reach out to you sure so yes so healthy balance fitness is in melbourne um and you can it's healthybalancefitness.com.au um, but yeah, the moderation movement, I'm the co-founder of moderation movement with dietitian Zoe Nicholson and you can find us, the best spot is on Facebook. So it's um, just moderation movement on Facebook. And um, yeah, so we, we post a lot of all of this about movement. We post about intuitive eating, about, you know, getting more in touch with our bodies, about body image, about, you know, embracing diversity. And um, yeah, so you know, probably the Facebook's the best way to contact. Um, but we also have a website and we've got a couple of ebooks as well, one on intuitive movement and one on intuitive eating as well that's on the website. But you can go through Facebook to find that link. And, yeah, on um, Instagram as well. So, yeah. Which for any Polka Dotsy fans who are actually listening to this, you need to go and follow the moderation movement. You need to go and follow Healthy Balance Fitness because these wonderful, amazing people walk the talk. and. I mean, what we do at Polka Dots is a little different, but I, I, I often sit at the feet and just worship what Jodie and oh, Zoe do. Yeah. Like, it's, it's incredible. And they're making such a difference to fitness and they're making such a difference in the BOPO movement. And it's, it's just so cool. So, yes. Well, thank you so much, Chloe. It's awesome. And it's always great to connect with people with um, similar values and a similar approach. I, I get so excited. They say never meet your heroes, but I'm just like, nah, meet them all. <laughs> um, we're all spreading together. <laughs> we, we need to do this. We need to yeah. do this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you've got a really cool venture that you're doing at the moment, teaching fitness professionals about intuitive movement and some of the things that you're doing with Healthy Balance Fitness. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so one of the things that I think is really important for fitness professionals to learn about is making language more inclusive. And I think a lot of the language that's used in fitness is very body shaming. It's very, um, it takes people away from being intuitive with their own movement and their own bodies. So um, I put together a presentation that is for fitness professionals about what we can do to change our language and the evidence behind why we might do that as well. Um, and, you know, the risk factors and it's just, just looking at how we can all be a more intuitive movement type trainer. So if anyone's interested, if they've got a team of um, trainers that they'd like me to chat with, please get in touch via the website. So I'd love to do that. That's absolutely awesome. And are you doing presentations at gym or group fitness um, organisations? Yeah. So, yeah. So either, you know, anywhere 
okay. council facilities, you know, um, gyms, whatever, you know, if there's a group of fitness professionals who are interested in learning more about that, that would be great. And it's certainly not everyone's ready to hear the, um, to hear that message. No, I, I, I can understand that, but I also think that the time is nigh and there is a shift. There are amazing people pushing this and do you know what? I, I literally think you're at the grassroots level of changing the world. So I hope so. Let's, let's wave our magic wands everywhere, Chloe. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, Jody. It has been an absolute blast talking to you. I will include all of your links in the transcript. Um, and yeah, for those of you who are listening along, make sure you check out Healthy Balance Fitness on Facebook and Instagram and the Moderation Movement on Facebook and Instagram. Jody's doing amazing things. Thank you so much, Chloe. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs>